Welcome back. Another episode, Ghetto Correspondent News Network. Your host, Sam Dammit. Frankie Diamond's over there. What's up? What's up, people? Yep. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, share, all that fly shit. Um, here it is. Another speedy Sunday. I'm over here drinking espresso, so <laughs> don't mind me. I love me some coffee, so anybody who knows, everybody knows that about me, or you should by now. Um, it's been an interesting week. Um, I mean, this whole month, I think the last, what, six weeks or so, basically since we started doing the show, every week has gotten more and more interesting. And um, it seems like things are turning um, around. Um, do you think that we are living in the middle of a black renaissance right now? Mm, smoke and mirrors, it seems like that. Uh, I was just on the phone with a friend of mine there at a protest right now. Uh, it's like kind of like a, uh, they call it a million man march kind of thing. But yeah, but you, it's a lot of protesting and shit, but it's a lot of smoke and mirrors. Because when you go back to like that video we did last week, the, the movement, Black Lives Matter, then there's the brand. Mm-hmm. And then I don't see a lot of shit really getting done. I'm like, okay, they banned the chokehold, but there's like 89 different other ways a cop can kill you. You know? And That's a fact. I, I, we'll get into it. But the, what happened in Atlanta over the weekend, I mean, come on. Yeah. No, that's actually that's actually where I wanted to start. Um but before we do get there, um I was listening to another podcast and the guy was um basically saying how like you know how these 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 movements like Black Lives Matter for instance, right? Um they get all of these 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 checks and stuff cut to them, but where does the money go? probably listen to the same shit I was listening to. <laughs> probably. And so yeah. I was like, I was like, oh shit, I never thought about it like that because it's like, they're out here speaking on behalf of all black people, but when they get these checks, who the fuck are they, you know, who they breaking off? Like there's no uh, community centers for the kids. There's nothing in these communities, but these motherfuckers are getting money. Social justice reform. That's the new way of basically, uh, that's where your money's going to. And I'm like, I personally think it's just a, um, it's almost like drug dealers. They use a, a, a legal company to launder their money, clean their money. Right. They, you Black Lives Matter, the brand is basically um, the movement. Black Lives Laundering. Yeah, the, the movement is, is used as propaganda to get people to support this movement. But really, it's just them laundering money for the Democrat Party. That's what it looks like to me. Mm. This is the way the Democrats are raising money. All of these donations are going through the Democrat Party, and then what else? What else, after whatever they got to pay back Georgie Boy, you know, wow. they got to pay back George Soros because he's the one who started the whole thing. You Damn, know, because like, it's I didn't hear about Black Lives Matter until like 2014. I think that was the year Eric Gardner got killed and Mike Brown got shot. Remember mm-hmm. that? Yeah. But it was it wasn't just aggressive because it wasn't an election year. Right election year so they're really aggressive right now so that's what that's what i was telling people on my channel like just be careful with these donations because you really do, who are you giving your money to yeah because we don't know where this money is going and we don't know how it's being divvied up so like for instance if because a lot of these companies are cutting checks so we have i don't know how many different fucking black organizations that represent or supposed to represent us that are getting checks cut in the name of black people, but nigga, I ain't get shit. Yeah, <laughs> I, still, I still haven't got a STEM check from the government, but I, 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 I'm looking at black <laughs> NFL just threw around like $250 million. I'm like, well, where is this going? Where is it going? It ain't going to us. Even if I am wrong about my democratic thing, like, where is it? Like, you, got, you got, can't give me no slack for that. I mean, that's a good take. Where is it going then? It is. Nobody should give anybody slack on their take. Like, that's, you know, yeah, it's an man, opinion. Like, I it might be a flaming that, one, but... Anyone, if my take doesn't make sense, but where is it going? Where's yeah. the money? Because this is a lot of money that I'm seeing. Nike and all these... Everyone, I'm like, They're all cutting checks, but mm-hmm. the rest of us are still on the ground. Like, hold up. And motherfuckers is dying in the name of all of these movements that are being created. And yeah, they raised what eleven million dollars or something like that for uh, George Floyd's daughter, which is amazing. I okay. applaud them on that, but you know, because the money won't bring back her father, you know, and that I feel like you know it's definitely the father being here is worth more 
far right. than any amount of money that they can, you know, put in this this family's pocket. Right. But um, let's say that justice is really just a band aid. It's never gonna really cure anything because like they fired. Now imagine if you you know the guy who got killed in Atlanta last night. They fired right. the cop who killed. Is that really gonna? You know, it's not. You're not gonna bring that man's life back. Exactly. So let's bring the people up to speed. Um, last night, um, in Atlanta. So hold up, the guy was killed on Friday. Yeah. Right. So an Atlanta Atlanta man by the name of uh, I think is it Rayshard or Rashard? Rayshard. Rayshard Brooks, twenty seven year old black man, was killed um in a Wendy's parking lot, which is yeah. crazy. Yeah, the drive through. Yeah. So the in the officer that killed him has been fired. And the uh, officer that was with him, I guess his partner, has been placed on administrative leave, which basically you get, still get paid. But the police chief resigns after this cop was killed. Yeah. They basically got fired. I don't even think they... Right. That, Resign yeah. is basically a way to save face. Like, look. Yeah. You got fired. Yeah. <laughs> you either go on fucking... How, how they say you could, you could leave by the window or the door? Your choice. Yeah. Get the fuck out. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so allegedly what happened is, so the report says that um, around 10.30 p.m. Friday, a man was reported sleeping in a parked car in the drive through lane. Now, when I first read that, I was like, I'm surprised people just didn't get up and start whooping his ass, being like, yo, come on, man. Like, you holding up the line. Like, niggas got, got, got to get their four for fours. They're trying to feed kids. Motherfuckers probably leaving for the club. Like, uh -huh. There's so much going on, and here you are sleeping the drive through So the cops show up, and they gave this man a field sobriety test, which, you know, they're saying, quote, unquote, he failed. You know, unfortunately, he's not here yeah. or for them to even, you know, have blood taken from him or show us the field sobriety test. Like, all of that is kind of out the window now. Uh, it's certain stuff I don't believe in the story because I've seen a video of him talking to the cops peacefully before the whole thing took place. He didn't look like he just woke up to me. Yeah, you know? no. Now, you could tell he was a little buzzed. In the, in the video, he says he had a few strawberry daiquiris or whatever. But um, I don't mean to <laughs> laugh. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and man said he, he had daiquiris. But um, I'm like, oh, hold up. And I've had a sober variety test before, but... It just, it takes a little bit while, it takes a little while to do it. It just, I don't know. It doesn't seem like they really did a, he didn't seem like he just woke up. If you watch that video, it just, right. I'm not buying that. And I'm not buying the fact that he died in the hospital. He died right there in that parking lot. Yeah. And this so, video footage of the white girl burning down the Wendy's. Yeah, I saw that one too. Cause I also like, as well, I was reading the story last night, I was like, this, a lot of this doesn't make any sense. You know, yeah. I mean, the fuck y'all said Wendy's on fire. <laughs> well, yeah, that part, that part, that's like a whole nother conversation. But the fact that this guy allegedly got into a scuffle with the police and he ran off with their taser. I mean, he did. That video? No, I didn't see that. Oh, I try to stay away that? from these videos of people no, being that, killed. That, that's true, though. He, he did, they did show that. I did see the video. They was wrestling and shit. Yeah. <laughs> and he out-wrestled two cops and he got that taser. And then he just... It's kind of hilarious when you watch Them daiquiris it, must have had something in it. They, they give you a little different type of strength if you can fucking... Yeah, that daiquiri or whatever. But it, it's funny when you watch the video, but it's not funny at the same right. time. But if you see how he runs and how he out-wrestles these cops and then he tries to get them with the taser and then once he shot the taser, all they got to do is say self-defense. So, boom. Wow. I think the justice you're going to get is the cop being fired because they, they, they're not going to prosecute these cops because they're going to say, oh, the guy resisted, he fought back, he ran, all of the typical things that give them an excuse to kill a nigga. Yeah. So RIP to that, man. But the real conversation that I wanted to have surrounding this was the um, the mayor, Keisha Lance Bottoms. Um, Funny name, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got to I got to be a little more, more mature in doing the shit like this, y'all. <laughs> I need to grow the fuck up. All right, so Keisha Lance Bottoms, this isn't like since this whole thing with George Floyd popped off and, you know, America kind of got turned upside down. She has been firing cops that have been out here just especially if they're caught on video doing wrong. So um a lot of people give her her hell for that, but do you think that she's like on the right path? Like, is this 
better or should or do we want to see like cops in jail like which one i mean they need to go to jail but personally i'm just one of them people I, i'm an eye for an eye type of nigga you know what i mean yeah i'm with the death penalty shit but she, technically she can't fire anybody she's a man she don't really work for you know what i mean she ain't over the cops i think what they do and if you look at america it always seems like they put a black person a black face in the mayor position whenever they got it's a predominantly black city and they know the crime is crazy they throw a black person in that position and try to blame all of the violence on them now is right. it a coincidence in chicago has been so violent the last few years is it a coincidence they got a black man a black woman also yeah and then you got lance bottoms black woman i remember detroit had a black guy uh kwame kwame kipatrick who got in trouble but they always put a, they will put a black man in position to try to blame and deflect all of the city crime issues and shit like this on them. But in reality, how much does this really have to do with the mayor? I mean, what the fuck is she supposed to do? Right. They was, they, people were protesting in front of this lady's house a couple weeks ago. The mayor's house? Yeah, Lance Bottoms. I'm like, what the fuck y'all want her to do? Like, Right, and, and why are they protesting her? Like, isn't didn't she do her job? Didn't she do what y'all wanted her to do? Like. Yeah, it was, I'm not trying to be a, a Superman, you know, say, Captain save a hope. I'm just saying, like, what else? What do you want the mayor to do about? I mean, all she can do is see that people get fired and shit like that. And, right. You know, she can't really, she she can't be everywhere. She wasn't in that Wendy's parking lot. Right. Like, I do think they just, they put in a lot of these tough big cities where they know it's a lot of shit going on. They will put a black person in that position. And like I say, is it a coincidence? A black man in Chicago? It's like the fall guy. Yeah, the fall guy. So they're going to blame yeah. all the homicides in Chicago on that little old ugly lady that looked like Grady Stanford and shit. L- Lori Moe. <laughs> yeah, no. They're blaming on little Grady and blame it on that. I'm like, nah, man. It's a, I don't think you can really blame it on the mayor, to be honest. Right. So I always wonder this, too, because you know how we, you know, not we, you and I, but in the general uh, congregation of black people always claim we want justice so like do we is are we ever are we satisfied when somebody when the police officer gets fired because event essentially they're losing their job their livelihood and depending on how much time they got in they might not have a pension or do we like really want to see them in jail like that's the real question because like you said you're you're about eye for an eye so yeah, yeah you ask me it's different i mean you kill one of my people i'm like yo death penalty you know, because, like, remember that lady killed that guy in, in Dallas? She only got three to five years. Yeah, that's crazy. That's going to go by like that. I mean, time goes by fast these days. It's yeah, just, I'm, I'm sure. It's, it's been, what, like two years already, right? No, it happened in January. But, I mean, look, it's June already. I mean, this, this time goes by quick, man. Hold up. That was, the, the, the woman yeah. in Dallas? Yeah, she ran into the guy's house and then the, the, met Boca the judge. Jean, right? Yeah, Judge. Nah, Manny. that was oh, January man. last year? This year. That was just this year, bro. That was the top of the year. That she it got sentenced? Like it was at the beginning of this year, if I'm not mistaken. When she got sentenced, because that man, he got killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the trial and all of that was this year. Okay, because I'm like, hold up. Yeah, this this fucking year, man. I, it's a, We're living in the twilight zone. I, yeah, this, I'm like, a lot to keep up with. That's why I say I ain't going to hold you to it. It's a lot to see. There's a lot of, it's a, it's a TV show. This shit is episodic. Every week, it's a whole new theme. It's a new cliffhanger. It's, I feel like I'm watching breaking bad or some shit this shit is crazy right. yeah um like i my city newark um we have um we have a black mayor but we've since i've been around there's always been a black mayor um but they they were one of the cities that you know when the protest broke out that it was it, it, or it didn't break out but it was very peaceful and right, um, it worked. yeah because your city is <laughs> I don't live there no more, but that's still oh, okay. my city. Nah, I just listen. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, I was say Newark is. Newark, Newark is rough, but it's rough because of the condition. You know, yeah. like people. I was, are, I was happy for y'all though when I seen. I said, "Damn, okay." I was, I was like Newark. I was like, "Oh shit." Yeah, 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 yeah. And and when when they told me it was happening, everybody was like, "Yo, how's it going in Newark?" I was just like, "I don't know, man." And then when it, it turned out that way, I was like, all right, cool. Kudos to um, Mayor Roz Baraka because he's actually, like, on the ground. Like, you know, people, you know, quiet as kept, people never really fuck with Cory Booker because 
he okay. basically he kind of sold the city down the river. You know what I'm saying? Like when gentrification was like you know just starting off, like Cory Booker, he got up in there in the middle of that and like made some things happen. Now, was it for the better or for the worse? Only time will tell because right now, what Roz is doing, he's trying to make sure that the city, the the citizens of the city stay within the city and they can open businesses. Like, yeah, you have all of these other people moving into downtown and they're building all of these high rise um, estates and they're still making sure that people can uh, live in the city. Like Shaq built a building downtown next to, um, what is that? Next to uh, NJ Pack and the Robert Treat. Like it's a huge high rise. And, um, you know, they had to make sure that some of the um, apartments in there were, you know, income based. And I was looking when I was looking around a studio, they wanted like 920 for a mm. studio in that building. I was like, they call this income based. Like right. it's, it's insane the way that it's going, but at least Roz is trying from what I see. Like now, yeah. like I said, when he's out of office or whenever, you know, time will tell, but he, but he's actually from like the turf, like, you know, born and raised there. Um, he grew up with my father, my aunt, um, my mom, all of them, like, you know, his father, uh, Mary Baraka, bless his soul, rest in peace, you know, philanthropist, like he has history tied to that city. So I feel like this means more to him than most mayors. You know, so like, Cory Booker, Booker's not from there. Nah, Cory Booker, Cory Booker lived in, uh, one of the housing projects, Brick Towers, to to prove that, you know, like, hey, I can live amongst the people. I remember okay. when I used to hang out in uh, Pennington Court, you know, back when I was uh, a little hood rat running the streets. He came through there one night, like, with his security guards trying to, like, act, talk to the people. Like, oh, hey, how's it going? What are you guys up to? Like, you know, trying to make it seem like he's really about that life. Meanwhile, <laughs> motherfuckers out here trapping, and here you come through at fucking 9 o'clock at night talk about some... Oh, sure. Huh? When was this? Shit, when was this? Like 2006, 2000? Yeah, 2006. Oh, Cory Booker for a minute. Yeah, yeah, nah, uh, he, was, he, was, he was there. I think, you know, and I feel like most of the mayors that was there, like, because before him, Sharp James was there. He was, shit, I think he had like 20 years or something. And then Cory Booker came in, and I think Cory did like maybe eight years or something. I forget however long the term is, but Ross has been there lately, and you know, he's, like I said, he's from the turf. Like, Sharp James is from the turf. That's what they should get from yeah, people who are from the. Because I always thought Cory Booker was, like, a great value Obama or something. Like, a knockoff. Obama. Exactly. That, and that's what, and that's what his, his um, electoral uh, campaign was all about. Cory wants to go into, like, he wanted to be mayor, yeah, to get to the Senate. Him. And he thinks he's going to get in the White House. But they, like... Nah, nigga, sit your Wonder Bread ass down. You had one, yeah, you, it was only one. They had one, the one and only. Yep. But, um, yeah, no, you're right. The A lot of these mayors in these um, black cities are the fall guy. That's mm -hmm. crazy because, you know, um, like you said, T.I. came out and, you know, when uh, this shit started, him and Killer Mike, and they were telling people not to um, – burn down the city but you know killer mike being such a revolutionary dude telling people to fucking stand up and fight the system now you're telling people not to burn down the city it's kind of like yo what do you want us to do you want us to stand with our hands tied like yeah, kumbaya and that shows you the, the lack of influence the mayor has i don't know if she's from atlanta i think she is but she had to go get the two influence she had to get two iconic rappers to try to settle these young black people down because she don't have the same reach to the young right. black crowd in Atlanta as Killer Mike and T.I. do. No. Veteran rappers, veteran rappers. Next thing, who's she going to get next? Little Baby? Come up there? You know, like, Mike, didn't, didn't he release uh, some conscious music? Song. Yeah, for, with Black Lives Matter. It was, yeah, it was, it was, he released a nice song. That's what I'm right. saying. Like, this, this shit's like mad trendy, and that's why it's, yeah, it's all on. convoluted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but she's going to probably have to get one of those rap niggas because she don't got that kind of influence in the streets of Atlanta. The people, they're they not listening to her. Right. Because for, for the most part, like everybody, everybody always refers to the fact that when Barack Obama was in 
office, he did more for everybody else than black people, which, you know, some would argue is true. Some would argue it isn't. That's neither here nor there. But yeah. history has shown us that, you know, these these black faces are basically just fall guys. So when shit gets bad, it's like, well, that person was in charge and they know us black people. All they got to do is point somebody out and we're on their ass. Yeah, so I'm like, you know, I, I get blame the man for a lot of different issues, but I don't see how you blame the man for a cop killing some some tipsy guy in the Wendy's parking lot. You know yeah. what I mean? First of I all, like, uh, yeah, they they need to learn how to, um, because they they're talking about like police reform, right? Or the whole thing is defund the police, as they want to say. And uh, a lot of people are confused as to what defund the police means. Um, you have. Uh, you have like the police, the, the guy that's head of the New York City Police Benevolence Association or whatever, or the police union, one of those fucking crews. And he was out there, he was like damn near about to cry because they're talking about defunding them. And he's like, we're good people. Uh, oh, I was like, yeah, that speech, what he's talking about? Yeah. There's somebody, no yeah. yeah, somebody somebody on Twitter put um, fucking hoods on all of their faces and let that speech play. Oh. <laughs> I know somebody took a clip. They took that clip and then they added all of the NY only NYPD uh, highlights of what they've done. Right. Just in the last few weeks. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is all NYPD. This isn't across the country. This right. is NYPD. That's how much shit they got on it just for the last three weeks. And you talking about oh, we're, my 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 badge is clean. Oh, like. What no, it ain't. Because if 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 you're the head of the the police union or police benevolence association, whichever one it is, if your badge can't be clean, if everybody else out here, and we're not yeah. saying everybody badge is dirty, but if you got some dirty badges that we've seen, mm-hmm. but he ain't been on minute. You can tell he in all this, but those same cops. It doesn't matter. Him. You're you're still you still need to be held accountable. Yeah, those same cops that killed Eric Gardner are still working for NYPD. Come on now. And so the crazy part, right, is they released um, a statement like or paperwork showing that, well, they're not showing. Somebody found out like the police, the New York City police alone gets funded six billion dollars. Not not six million, six billion. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of fucking money for police. And like some of them were saying like, yo, that's a lot of their salaries, like, especially when they first begin, is like the equivalent of like $18, $19. Like, so where does the $6 billion go to? Like, so, yeah, I do, I do agree. Like, yeah, bro, shit, $6 billion, if y'all take $1 billion of those dollars and put it back into the community, it isn't going to really affect the police. Man, and everybody they stupid shit like body cams that they forget this current turn on. Right. Uh, I, they might be sending it to the Republicans, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean that might be a political front too. They're probably putting that money into the Republicans party, but like, it's definitely not going to the hood. Right. I mean, how, how many body cams and shit can you buy these cops? Six billion? Right. And you're buying body cams and they don't work. So yeah. somebody's lying here. I got to cut it on. They had it on last night or the other night though in Atlanta. So, yep. and now you got it on when somebody's drunk. Now you, yeah. All the other incidents, it, was, it wasn't working. The weird thing about that whole thing is New York, New York State alone is known for having high taxes. So mm-hmm. if the city is getting $6 billion, what do you think the rest of the state is getting? That's insane. Uh-huh. But we can't, we can't get a, a fucking decent school for the kids. We can't get, you know, because... At this point, it ain't about me or, you know, my peers. It's about the future, the kids. Like, you know, give them something, put something in the communities because now, what, what is it, like 40 million people don't have jobs or something? Yeah, something 40, like that. 40 million people. Like, their jobs not coming back yet? Now, some of them, their jobs aren't going to come back. But you would think right. shit is working slowly. Some of these people's jobs have got to be coming back by now. Who, a lot of people don't want to come back. They got lazy, been sitting at home three months. Yeah, collecting that unemployment. I don't feel like coming back. So, I mean, uh, after a week, I was like, I don't feel like coming back. I'm Word. Three <laughs> Shit, after four days, I was like, I don't want to go back. Like yeah. three, but Imagine four months. I'm like, bro, I really wouldn't want to, especially if I'm getting paid. Shit, last year I was out fucking six and a half weeks. I fucking tore a uh, muscle in my um elbow. Six and a half weeks. So imagine 
when I had to go back, I was like, yeah, what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> but yeah, no, they, they want to defund the police. And unfortunately the, the verbiage that they're using makes people think that they're saying, uh, dismantle the police or stop paying the police. Or it's like, it's no, that's not oh, it. Do it for free. <laughs> right. You should, should make us pay them with our taxes. I, I'll put it like that. Right. Well, we do. That's yeah. that's the problem. Like the, the motherfuckers. Don't let, don't make us pay them. Right. But that that's for some reason like the way that this is. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a numbers guy. Uh, and I, huh? Yeah. City taxes, state taxes, and right. Pay. All of that dumb shit. Like, nah. I listen. My head hurts just thinking about trying to fucking <laughs> where to begin with that shit. But um. What what do you, what is what's your take on it? Should it, should they defund the police? Like or do you think it really doesn't matter? Because as you said, it might be more laundering or a front. Laundering. You could defund them, but I mean, it's, it's not. If it's not gonna, the, the whole problem with the police is just they they gotta. It's the the treatment that they give us, and it's just the the. Uh, the injustice, really. That's the only problem I have with the police. Talk to motherfuckers like you got some sense and stop killing people. What about, like, reason. we keep going back to that situation. All you had to do was shoot the man in the leg, you mm. know, when he turns around and runs. But I guess you're upset because he whooped your ass, and then on top of that, he tried to tase you. So you just said, cops and robbers, boom. Like, that's the only thing I'm holding them accountable for. You know what I mean? Talk well, the, to people you got some damn sense. That, too. So my thing is this, right? two points if you if they if they think that you're taking money out of their pockets what the hell you think they're going to do like look at people right now they don't have any money because they're fucking sitting at home basically taking money out of their pockets by making them stay home they can't go to work their jobs are closing whatever whatever people start acting up when they don't have money like fuck that like i I got bills to pay i got kids to feed Mm -hmm. and two like you said the treatment i think that they should have a different type of training because Anybody who knows um, police or kind of how they, like, at the gun range, they are trained to shoot, like, in the chest, in the head, like, you know, the the upper torso. If you go to a gun range, there's never, like, a full length, a full body uh, piece of paper where they're like, all right, now aim for the kneecap. Or, you know, it's like it's always the chest and and up. So they're they're taught to shoot to kill. They need to change that. They have a lot of military type training that they do at these police academies. And right. I'm like, you're not military. You're not Air Force. You're not. You're not, you're a not Marine. the Marines, motherfucker. Yeah, you're not the Marines. They need to dumb down some of the training um, because they they train them like military. And I'm like, no, these motherfuckers are cops. They're supposed to be playing with the kids in the neighborhood and assisting old ladies and you know right. shit. Like you know what I mean? I, I didn't have that relationship with cops growing up, but that's what you see on TV in the white neighborhoods. That's what they do. Right. And I was I was having that conversation with um another carrier at work. I was saying the police should be out here the same way that we are out here. You're supposed to be in the same neighborhood every day. You know the people by name. You know the families. You know what's going on. So that way you know how to deal with certain situations. Not... Mm-hmm. You over here today, you take a nap in that neighborhood tomorrow. Like, these, yeah. they just, they sit around doing nothing, just waiting for something to pop off so they can shoot. Yeah. Like I said, I've lived in a lot of neighborhoods and I've never had any personal relationship with any of the police officers in my no. neighborhood. Because there was okay. different cops in and out. They didn't come out their cars. A lot of times they were terrified to even get out the car, depending on where we was at. Certain parts of Brooklyn, Queens, they wouldn't even want to get out the car. These white boys, was, they they scared. I'm like, why are you putting these shook up boys in, in the hood? They don't even want to come out amongst the people. And they just, they they patrol the area, you know, just get their hours out. And then they yep. leave. And they only come out the car if they have to. So <laughs> they're not even trying to have that rebuttal, that 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 chemistry you're talking about. Like, oh, Miss James down the street. And, right. Oh, let me introduce myself to the new neighbor. They don't, that, that shit don't exist. Nope. Well, unfortunately, that's the way that it, it rolls. Okay, so mm-hmm. moving along. Uh, so some statues of Christopher Columbus are being dismounted across the country. So three reports of statues being uh, removed. Uh, Richmond, Virginia, Boston, Massachusetts, and at the Minnesota State Capitol. So 
in Richmond, Virginia, they tore down the statue, vandalized it, whatever that means, and then threw it in a fucking uh, in the lake. Yeah, I seen that. <laughs> People are fed up in uh, Boston. They beheaded it. They beheaded a uh, statue, so the city officials had them remove it. And then in Minnesota, uh, that's the one that they just they just took down. Yeah, I'm surprised by Boston though. Yeah, me too. I yeah. lived in Boston. I was like, hold up, Boston's a pretty racist city. Yeah, and if you okay, got Boston. you got racist ass Boston out here fighting, like yeah. <laughs> that should tell you something. I like the I like the because they got it from Nashville, did it first. Mm. Uh, but I mean I like it, but at the same time, these are old dead guys. I mean, shit. Can we can we knock over some of these real life fucking racists that's out here making these laws that's hidden in coops somewhere we don't fucking know? Right. But it is good because, like I say, if you're going to get rid of the Confederate flag, you might as well get rid of all of this Confederate symbolism that they got all around the country. And that's, that was basically what I was getting to. So even though, like, we have the, the right to free assembly, um, you know, you can fly whatever flag you want, which you can't because you try to fly a Nazi flag in America, you might get your head knocked off. Um, but, you know, America has these different laws where it's like, you you have some sort of freedom, so if you want to represent like some foul, some foul shit, you, you kind of can. But now the tables are turning to where as though they want to have these these Confederate statues removed, they want to take down the Confederate flags, and people are up in arms. Do you think that that's? I mean, yeah, I know where you stand on it, but like elaborate on why you think that it would make sense for these Confederate statues and flags to be removed? I mean, there's two different ways you can look at it. Cause um, like you said, the Nazis, like the, the Holocaust didn't last that much longer than the Civil War, but you can't put no Nazi nothing up. You can't even rock the Hitler beard, you know? But yeah. why is it 100 and some odd years, even though Civil War lasted four years, white people all around this country could still post that flag and nothing, you know what I'm saying? What was that, the outrage? They could post that flag up and no one said anything. Yeah. You know, but you, oh God, don't do no Nazi shit. But the other part of me is I kind of liked it because I knew if I rolled past a, a bar or a restaurant and I was in the South and I seen that flag, I said, okay, I'm not eating there. Right. Like, yeah, I'm not going there. Like it was a symbol of, okay, I know what time it is with you in this pickup truck. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just, you know, because I, I can respect a blatant racist or a blunt racist more than the one. It's the ones that's in the closet that's hiding. Those are the ones you got to worry about because you can't right. they up on you. So I kind of like the flag in a sense, but at the same time, it's like, dude, y'all lost the war. It's over. If not if Jews, because of Jews, out of respect, we don't put no Nazi shit up. We y'all shouldn't be putting that shit up either. Out of respect for black for black yeah. people. I agree. Like, like I said, how long the Holocaust wasn't that much longer than the Civil War, man? Right. And fucking slavery lasted fucking. What four hundred? Yeah. Some 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 crazy number. Hundreds of years. Like years. then a hundred years of Jim Crow. They was just throwing you know watermelon and eggs at you and shit. And we only got what like fifty years of fucking civil rights. Yeah, nineteen fifty five, fifty fifty four, Brown versus Board and all of that. Yeah, like and I mean that that's still a fight. Like we're still fighting to this day, and and we're gonna keep fighting and keep fighting. But um, I agree. I do, um, even though I don't like the stat, uh, the the Confederate flag, I do like to know where I stand with certain people, so that way, um, I know how to address you. You know, like I don't, I don't like that, um, that uh, what is it, uh, covert racism? Is that the one where they? Yeah, I don't yeah. like that shit. Like, even though I don't like racism, if I know where you stand, I know how to deal with you. Um, that's why when a lot of, yep, exactly. That's why when a lot of white people or, you know, want to have these conversations about what's going on in the world, they kind of want to see my take on it. I'm like, no comment. Like I have a dude on my route, right? Police officer or retired cop. This motherfucker has blue lives matter all over his goddamn house. He's got the fucking, the flag in the yard. He's got the fucking painter tape, you know, the blue paint tape that yeah. they Got, like he got that shit on his uh storm door and on one of the windows like into the blue lives matter ribbon he's got fucking yeah. these these two white cadillacs and they both got the little fucking i'm like 
And he's like, you know what time it is. Yep, I know exactly what time it is. Around the country to see how great people. But hold think. up, here's the wild thing: this motherfucker gave me fifty dollars for Christmas last year. Oh, that's what's up, man. So that's why you keep your mouth shut, huh? Yeah, exactly. I'm like, <laughs> hey, look, I don't see nothing. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm, I won't have that conversation with him because I know where he stands. Yeah. But, but like, I won't disrespect him because, listen, I know where you stand. There's no, there's no confusion here. Yeah, I'm just glad people are starting to see because a lot of people down here, they, they tend to think New York or upstate, like up north is white people aren't racist. I'm like, yes, the fuck they are. Did you see the guy in, in Nassau County in Long Island or whatever? He was kneeling uh, on a uh, some kind of Black Lives Matter flag. And yeah, was, yeah, yeah. I saw that shit. Yeah. He was the George Floyd death and was telling people, fuck off. And he works for FedEx. FedEx fired him. Good, as they should. <laughs> First, they said for business. They suspended him first. Let me get that out of the way. Then oh, yeah. Then a whole of suspension. And then yep. that's when they said, okay, we'll do the right thing now. We tried to play that white power game. So since we're talking about um, people removing Confederate statues and flags and shit, NASCAR says it will ban the Confederate flags from being flown at events. I fucking laugh my ass off. NASCAR, you never like niggas to begin with. What the fuck are you talking about? NASCAR. Niggas don't like y'all either. I right. don't know. Many black folks that watch NASCAR. I think I might have met me before in my whole life, but they over exactly. time. I just can't watch it. I love racing. I've been to a lot of racetracks, NHRA, street racing, but I'm not. I'm about to watch a bunch of niggas riding a circle. No, oh. I've never been a fan of NASCAR. Like um, you look at NASCAR, you know what time it is. I'm going to sleep. That's what time. It is. <laughs> that too. And but you know, you know, yeah, it's white folks. I mean. The, the, the Just history. Like they, had, they had flags in the, in the parking lot. People were tailgating. Right. It's like we know what time it is. Yo, the history of NASCAR, right? And a lot of people don't know this. I'm a fucking nerd, so here I'm going to give it to you. The history of NASCAR comes from uh, bootleggers running moonshine because they used to have to fucking trick out their cars or like the, the suspension and all of that to make it so they can carry the alcohol but also have enough speed to if they got to get away from the cops. So when Prohibition was over and these motherfuckers had all of these cars. They needed something to do with it, which is crazy when you think about it. They were doing illegal shit with these cars, right? Mm-hmm. And when Prohibition was over, they was like, well, it's not like the 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 people was like, all right, we're going to confiscate these cars like they do to fucking drug dealers and uh, motherfuckers, black people who do illegal shit and they get money with it, you know, whatever. Fucking Kennedy, his father made his millions off of fucking bootlegging, but you know, he became president. That's a whole nother conversation. Anyway, these motherfuckers, we know what time it is. In in the South, like NASCAR has never, ever been Negro friendly. Even though they do have a black racer. Yeah, well, he's biracial. uh, Oh, Bubba Wallace? Yeah, Bubba Wallace. I should have known. I've never heard him do anything pro-black or anything prior to a couple of weeks ago. So, I mean, I don't know how much credit I'm going to give Big Bubba, but... um, I don't know. Big Bubba painted his whole car Black Lives Matter, and you know he did. He tricked it out. I'm like Bubba, you've been racing for a minute. Why did it take you up until now to speak up and for your races and sport? Mm-hmm. And even though he's mixed, does he? Does he? I bet you he still checks white on the fucking uh, race, <laughs> the race box. You know he do. Yeah, but but that's what I'm saying. Like it's convenient for him now because it's like, well, now I can represent my black side because of all of this that's going on. Why weren't you doing this in the face of oppression when it was you knew they was going to frown upon you? You knew that, that people wouldn't fucking that's help you. Jackie Robinson. Mm-hmm. You know, it's easy to speak up now when everybody's doing it and the whole world is BLM and everyone's yeah. It's easy to stand up now, but what the fuck was you? I never heard of Bubba Wallace before, and even though I don't watch. I, I follow sports, and I still never heard of seeing this dude. I was like, who the fuck is this? Shit, it wasn't too long ago. One of those, uh, was it Formula? One, one of those fucking race car drivers was playing the game, and they got his white ass on fucking tape saying nigga. I believe he was a NASCAR driver. Wow. This happened not too long ago. And then he came out and said, oh, I didn't. Whatever, you know the stupid apology that the PR team writes yeah. for. Like, dude, you said it. You said it because your boy had to remind you, yo, you're on the air. He's like, oh, shit, they caught me. They just can't help themselves with that word. They just, they, they can't help it. It just rolls off the door. They can't help it. Yeah. That's like, and like that, is that the, that's, that, it, 
if I'm white, if that's the that's the least you can do. That's the only thing you don't have to do is just say the N word. How hard is that? That's all you have to do is just not say that one word. That one word. They, they can't help it. <laughs> nope. Well, I mean, listen, I'm not a fool, and this all ties into my um, belief that it is not about Black Lives Matter with these companies. It's about Black Lives Marketing, and because it's trendy, and they can get in front of it, or they can get with the program and be like, oh, we stand in solidarity, so people could be like, okay, I still support you, or yeah, let's go. Like, did they... Did NASCAR think that we're going to bring fucking Tahoes and Suburbans to their tailgating party or something? Because yeah, like, it's NASCAR. It might be, that, that's the thing about NASCAR. Like I, I, I will say about NASCAR, the difference between them and everybody else, Nike, obviously, all these other companies, black people fuck, fuck with them. Chick Fil A, you know, uh, this one, that one. NASCAR, I don't really know if they're doing it for clout because you're not going to get any black viewers anyway. I don't care right. how you. You're not gonna get one, two, three million black people to tune in and watch NASCAR. You're not gonna get. Many we still ain't watching that shit. Yeah, you, Thanks for fucking gonna, with us, though. Yeah, you're not gonna get any new supporters. So I don't really think NASCAR is doing it out of uh, uh, clout or whatever. They're doing it for a reason, obviously. But I just don't think they're doing it like, oh, we just gonna let's get some black money. Like right. they never get black people to buy into that shit. Not by the masses. Yep. And then then there was some white guy who was like. Uh, he was what? What's his name? Ray Cicarelli. Ryan. Oh, Ray, 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 uh, Ray Cicarelli. Yeah, I Cicarelli. Know. Yeah, this guy. He. Oh my! He's not even fucking like a full time racer. He's part time. He's never won anything. No, I seen it yesterday. I watched it five. I watched ten seconds. He came in twenty ninth place. <laughs> you know, he's never won a race. And he says that after after this um, twenty twenty season, he's retiring. He made his announcement, and everyone was like, "All right, get the fuck on." You know that just proves my point that the Confederate flag is for fucking losers. Yeah, like yeah. you'll never you'll <laughs> never win if you rocking that flag. Like he came in twenty yeah. ninth place talking about some. I don't. Uh, what is it? His 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 whole statement was. He said, "I could care less about the Confederate flag, but some people do, and it doesn't make them a racist." All you doing is fucking one group to cater to another, and and I ain't spend the money. What? I must have been tired. I ain't spend the money where to That's participate what he's in any political BS. So everything is for sale. Yeah, that was his statement. Basically, yeah, saying, that's statement. I read the same thing too, and I was thinking, damn, can I read? That's just the way they wrote. They uh, oh, that's the, all right, cool. So it ain't just me. I was like, hold up, because I wrote this late last night. <laughs> and that's hillbilly. Uh, uh, cold talk when white people about heritage shit. Oh, yeah. heritage. And that's why yeah. there was a guy who works for NASCAR named Ryan McGee. He got on ESPN and said, hey, fuck all of that. He says, y'all know what it is. This ain't about heritage. He says, I'm telling you, the white guy, he says he is a descendant of slave owners. His great great grandparents were slave owners. I said, wow, finally a white person tell the truth about where they, that, you know, where, where their history comes from. He said, yeah, I'm a descendant of a slave owner. He says, I will acknowledge that shit, that flag, and that whole legacy is not about heritage. You know what it's about, man. Right. So that's like insulting my intelligence. Like, if you white and I see you with the flag, don't tell me it's heritage. Because if that's the case, why aren't black people from the South who love being from the South, why aren't they rocking that flag? Well, there was one dude, and everybody shamed him. They was like, "Yo, this motherfucker, he yeah. must be blind." I think but, his granddaddy was in the in the war, right? Or like that. But Whatever. Like, if it was about heritage and southern pride, all southerners would be fucking with that. For right. The most. It's and it's funny. You. you know the funny part? When I lived up north in Vermont, I used to see white boys with fucking Confederate flags, and I used to be like, "Yo, do y'all even know what the fuck you're doing?" Like, <laughs> you were born and raised in one of the fucking most progressive states, like. There are um, old, like, they got old plant plantation houses up there. That's what the name of it, the style, um, where they're, like, the Underground Railroad went through Vermont. Like, it wasn't like, you know, Vermont was never this old, you know, about slavery. So you have no heritage right there. But they think, oh, it's a redneck thing. Like, let me represent my redneck. And it's like, uh, idiot, you're in one of the most progressive states in the fucking country. But yet here you are being ignorant. But like I said, the Confederate flag is for losers. Yeah, I mean Dylan Roof had it all over his Facebook page. Like, come on. He's a fucking loser too. Yeah. All right. So I guess that's our show for this week. Um yeah, I think I think um 
Yeah, I'm fucking fired up. Shit, I got to lay, lay low on those presses. Hit, y'all need to hit the thumbs up button when y'all watch these videos. Hit the thumbs up and hit the bell so you get the notifications so you know when these videos drop. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Make sure y'all like, subscribe, share, all that fly shit. I thank y'all for tuning in for, to another episode. Hopefully, you know, people um, take from this, because I've been thinking about this too. I don't want people to think that we're doing this as to, to show the negative side. Like, I do try to find, like, positive uh, things that are happening amongst the Black community. Um, but right now, we're just in, like, a weird time to where, so everything about race and I hate that, you know, I have to do it, but I think yeah. we wouldn't be doing our justice if we weren't speaking on it. Yeah. It's like I said, it's like the NBA and all that, and Kyrie Irving was like, man, fuck all that. Basketball is a distraction. Let's just, let's just keep fighting social justice. Like, y'all motherfuckers want to play ball. I could make a ton of silly videos. Like, I'm, I, I, what, 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 I, what do I look like talking about 6 9 and Nicki Minaj? That's what I was just about to say, too. Like, I don't really care about that. <laughs> Like, I could have did a video on that. It's a lot of silly shit, but I'm just like, I'm just not really in the mood. And yeah. even though some of the race shit is kind of wearing me down, it's like, bro, what I look like? It's like yeah. talking silly shit right now. This, the timing ain't right, so. Yeah, because not, I'm not a political pundit by any means. Not mm -hmm. by any means, but when we're talking about race and we're talking about what's going on right now, because we are living in the middle of a black renaissance. We're living in the middle of history. However you want to write it, like it's going down and I want to be on the side that's reporting it and giving my perspective because the way that I see it and the way you see it, like it's two, yeah. it, we're kind of on the same page, but it's two different sides, which is a good thing. Like we yeah. need that. We need this conversation. So I thank everybody. Thank you again, Frankie. Uh, All right. I'll be in touch. Um, and yeah, until next week, everybody. Peace.